Alright, and we're back. Alright, so. Uh, I had to go back to the designer, and I forgot that um, the original one, I actually changed this to the same thing as this, as 50. It actually should be at 1000, because we wanted to count it in seconds. Alright. Besides that, everything else was uh, up to par. Alright, so, like before, we're uh, going to start repeating the branches over again. And in order to do this, we're going to want to tell it when it reached an edge to go ahead and repeat the process. And in this case, we are going to go ahead and start grabbing um, the move to functions for each of these. And let me see if I can grab these. Yeah, I can probably grab these right here. start changing these once again the Y stay the same but this right here is all gonna have to go away. We're gonna want to tell it the specific value to which the X should be at and at this case I'm putting money at 3030. And this one's gonna go ahead and be at one one duplicate again. B two and B two. And then for the same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and make the cloud. But this one since it's a larger picture, remember any edge and it's gonna count from the front. So let's say this purple box is the front picture of uh, the cloud. It's counting from this edge here. So if we place this at 3.30 and a little part sticks outside the edge is going to keep on fidgeting back and forth because it believes that it's still hitting the edge although it's just the back end of it hitting the edge not the front so we're going to have to move this one up quite closer so we're going to go like about 260 and we'll see how that works this is kind of like a figuring out where the best sizes work here and once again I have forgotten that I'm going to go ahead and have to do this for each. I should have done that. My bad. So I guess. Just trying to do this the quickest way possible. I duplicate it. Because we're going to have to duplicate each one of these for each one. Because if we just did it for B1, every time just B1 hit the edge, all of them would reset. And that's not what we want. We're going to want to reset them individually. So this we're going to go ahead and set the tree height. do that we're gonna go ahead and grab that function from B1 and we're gonna slide down here and grab this over here we're gonna just change this and change the height B1 and we're gonna want to change it to that variable tree height that we already preset with the random generator global TH and then for the placement of this, since the height is going to be different, counting from the top edge, we're going to have to um, account for its height difference. So the height of the picture we can determine. To be, I'm gonna need a subtract function, my bad. We're gonna have to account for this down over here, this set height. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that height again, duplicate that, and throw that in here, and then we're going to 
subtracted from the overall height of the screen. Is 375, but I want a little bit above the grass, so I'm going to go ahead and make that 365 by 10 pixels above the border. And the last thing I'm going to want to do is then redo the variable again. So after that's all done, set in stone, we want to change the value of the tree height so that way it changes again. And in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and pull that random math function and set that variable to it after this is all done. Once again, we're going to want to pick anything from 50 to 200. And there we are. Now this is what we can go ahead and start duplicating because all the factors are there. We're just going to have to change it for each value. So instead of B1 reaching the edge, maybe B3, B3 moves. And our tree height stays the same, but the image set should be B3. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that once again. And this one should be B2. The tree height is going to be staying the same. one duplicate and go ahead and get rid of the height change because we're not going to have to worry about this just for the cloud and once again I'm going to the box and we just, this is just for the cloud move it back so like I was saying before I want to make this a lot shorter do about 270 on that <coughs> and the Y we're going to need the Y, the same value they originally had. Click and drag and put that in there. Alright. Now for, for the actual um, colliding with this. So right now everything will move on the screen. It'll move fluently. Everything will start moving to the right hand side and the bird is able to jump up and down. The only downside now is that the bird can go through the branches, so we have to start making collide scenarios. So when it collides with a branch, we get a value of the clock stops or whatever. So in order to do this, we're going to have to start doing collides. And we're going to want to work with the bird, which is my image sprint in this case because I was lazy and didn't rename it. I wanted to go ahead and grab the collide width. And you want to go ahead into your control and grab an if statement. And then you want to go ahead and call the bird again. And get a call to function of colliding with other. Put it in here. And now you want the name of the object it's hitting. So we'll start with branch number one. We'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and grab branch number one. And if image one, image sprint one, collides with branch one, we want it to set off a notification. And in this case, we want to go ahead and grab our notifier. You should make a block because the notifier actually is a pain in the butt because it actually stopped your whole phone. But just for this simple task, I'm just going to do a simple notification message box because it just makes life a little, a little bit easier. Text. The button is going to be OK. Go ahead and duplicate that. And the title will be you lose. And then for the last one, we'll want to start joining them together. So go ahead and grab that. And then duplicate this again. 
and change the text for your score is and put a couple spaces in there. Now we have to get and put the score that will be generated up into that box there, which we don't have yet. So we're going to go ahead and move on to that. So when I start doing this, we have to start making another variable, which will change. So we'll go ahead and initialize it. We'll call it score. And we want it to have a value of 0. And then, in order to actually start keeping score, I want to go ahead and grab that score timer that we had here before. And then when that timer goes off, we wanted to add 1 to this. So then go ahead and grab your set to variable. Your score, get your map function, add, duplicate that, add one, and then we're going to go ahead and grab that value. And change the score. So we're adding one to the score. And then we want to update that uh, label that we had down at the bottom. We want to you know, keep track of your score. So we want to go ahead and change and set the text to, and we want to go ahead and grab that score. So duplicate. So it's going to add one, put in the score, a score a little thing down at the bottom, bottom box, and then it'll loop back through every one second. So it gets one point per second. No update down there. Now we can join that, get score, duplicate that again, and join it to that text. And what that'll do is when that message pops up, the score will be the time or the score that's at the bottom. Now we just have to go ahead and repeat this process for the rest of the branches. And so the way doing that again is once again just duplicating that branch right there. We're going to go ahead and change this to B3. And then once again and B2. I did forget one thing in this little branch here. I want to go ahead and grab to set to that score. And I want to set that back to zero. Remember, order is everything when it comes to these uh, links here. So I've seen people go ahead and put that set that score to zero on top of the message box. And what happens in that case is that instead of the actual score that was placed, it places zero because the order of operation runs downward and the zero was placed beforehand. So you lost that score. So remember to always have your order of operations downward. downward. So if you, you hit run into some trouble, look at the actual order of your actual uh, flow of orders. All right, and I think we're looking pretty darn good, I have to say, so far. So I'm going to go ahead and boot this up and see what happens.